prologue you are listening at novelfull.audio. The sky was gray with billowing clouds roiling steadily across it. Thunder crackled and a blinding flash of lightning streaked down from the sky, without making any noticeable sound. Chang Liang, a demigod, one, held a zax, two, and stood upon a gigantic serpent's head, which had been beheaded just now, and was stunned as he gazed at the sky. He saw, hovering over the horizon, a wriggling purple serpent tail, which almost covered the entire vault of the sky. The serpent was so huge that he couldn't discern its head, and it blocked the entire skyline. Hiding the sky and covering the earth, the serpent's body was often submerged in dark gray clouds. Lightning occasionally struck the serpent's body, and created a horrible atmosphere, which made the giant, Meng Ming, grimace in pain and shiver unceasingly. This crazy bitch has gone mad again, who enraged her this time. While Meng Ming cursed, a mottled, ancient round cauldron, three, slowly descended from the heavens and floated in the air, with a sudden bang, thunder and endless lightning surged out from the cauldron. Soon, the sky returned to normal, and the huge serpent also vanished into thin air. Dark clouds amassed in the sky, torrents of rain lashed onto the earth, and the air was filled with cool mist and showers of water. A brightly lit crystal pyramid made of glass, illuminated the dark night sky. Dozens of armed men wearing raincoats surrounded the pyramid, and kept a vigilant watch over the place. Suddenly, the raindrops started to splash rhythmically on the ground, like the beating of a heart. The rain droplets gradually rose more than a foot high from the ground, and the rainfall weaved into dozens of water ropes, silently wrapping around the armed men's necks. The water ropes swung violently and broke their necks, taking their lives instantly. A dim silhouette suddenly emerged from the fog and walked towards the pyramid gate, step by step. Every step closer to the gate, the hazy stature became clearer and at last turned into a transparent man of water, who stood in front of the pyramid gate. In a flash, the water man slightly shook his body, transforming into a real person. The figure was tall, slim, dressed in a bright, black armor, and had a handsome physique. He was Qin Long. Numerous water drops condensed into water ropes, which were wriggling like snakes, and drilled into the pyramid, cutting off all security equipment lines like sharp knives. A large electrical fire emerged from the pyramid, only the lighting system was left intact. Forcing the three-dot-foot-dot-thick crystal gate open, Qing Long slowly walked into an exhibition hall. More than a hundred crystal exhibition tables were placed in a circle, under the brilliant lights of the hall. Cross-dot-legged skeletons were positioned on each of those tables, and notably, the exhibition case in the center, made of bulletproof glass, held a multicolored, translucent round cauldron, the size of human head. A totem of a dragon and phoenix was embossed on its surface. Qing Long moved closer and quietly observed the cross-dot-legged skeletons. These skeletons had a similar structure to that of humans, however, the bones of their entire body had a dark golden color, and were translucent like glass. If they stood up straight, their height might have reached more than two meters. More astonishingly, in addition to the two dark eye sockets on either side of their face, there was a third eye socket located in the middle of their eyebrows, which was slightly larger than the other two. Three dead eyed people. Qing Long pulled out a dagger and knocked the skeleton with it. The skeleton gave of sparks when it was knocked by the dagger, which had been made from a special alloy and was forged at a level comparable to diamonds. Unexpectedly, the dagger failed to leave even a single mark on the skeleton. Qing Long's expression became serious. Humanoid skeletons which were harder than diamonds must be extremely valuable, he thought. This time, I came by myself. Hmm, worthy. Qing Long turned around and walked up to the exhibition case in the center, he chuckled and said, Hey, if you don't show up, I may just take these treasures and leave. The side door of the hall opened, and a team of warriors came in through the door. They were wearing long, black trench coats and their bodies were wrapped in flames, lightning, hurricanes, and other odd supernatural visions. Walking in the front was a blonde-haired young girl with green eyes, she was slim and pretty. Held in her hands was an oddly shaped jade sword. Mr. Qing Long, 
we've heard so much about you. The girl walked towards Qin Long, slightly bowed to him and continued, in the past few years, more than a hundred of our people have died by your hands, including three of my former secret service directors. However, what's inconceivable is, this is the first time that we get to see you in person. Aya, I'm not that handsome. Qin Long teased the young girl, at the same time, he pressed his right hand onto the bulletproof glass case, and shattered it into pieces with his palm muscles. Oh God! People who were standing behind the girl exclaimed aloud, and unconsciously took a step back. They had heard about Qin Long, who came from the eastern country of Hua Xia, and was known as the strongest man in the world. However, they never thought that Qin Long would be so powerful. They had done tests a few days ago and confirmed that even tank guns could not break the case. Did Qin Long just shattered it bare dot handedly? This was beyond their imaginations, was it even possible for a humans to be this strong? Qin Long held the three dot legged cauldron with both of his hands, which gave an extremely pleasant feeling. Holding the cauldron, Qin Long felt like he was holding the entire universe. Qin Long carefully put the cauldron into his bag, which was tied around his waist, and said, These treasures are taken from Liang Zhu, for, the ancient city of my country. I have to bring them back. According to our rules, the strongest man gets to make the decision. You won't disagree that I reclaim our treasures, will you? The smiling girl looked at Qin Long and said with a soft voice, Mr. Qin Long, you might want to know some of our research results dot about these mysterious treasures. You may not guess it, but according to our survey, we found that the soil layer, where these treasures were buried, have at least a hundred thousand years of history. Qin Long subconsciously touched his bag. Thousands of years old antiques. Human history was still in its nascent stage, wasn't it? Was it even possible for those ancient people to create such a beautiful and exquisite treasure with such an inexplicable power hidden in it? The girl turned over her hand, and revealed the jade sword she had been holding the whole time. The jade sword was three feet long and a palm dot size wide, carved out of a single piece of jade. Near the hilt was an odd totem with an erected tower, scarlet eyes floated above the tower, seemingly evil and cold. We have tested that this jade sword is made of Hatian white jade, the material was Hatian white jade indeed. As we all know, white jade is a type of nephrite, which is very delicate. The young girl smiled, however, whether natural diamonds or our laboratory's hardest special alloy, this sword can cut them as easily as cutting a piece of tofu. The young girl brandished the sword, smiled and continued, I split a strategic bomber with this sword earlier across a distance of two kilometers, with my strength, I could split a strategic bomber. Mr. Qin Long, I truly can't imagine what would happen if this sword was held in your hands. Qin Long's complexion drastically changed, he didn't take the girl and her people serious at all, they were just a bunch of cannon fodder to him. But, if this sword was as powerful as she said, this may not be that easy. So this is a trap, then? Qin Long asked. In the meanwhile, he twisted his neck and soothed the joints in his body. We've always wanted to have an opportunity to negotiate face to face, with you. The girl said with a charming smile on her face, in the past few years, you have caused us too much damage. We hope that you will be able to join us. If so, you can have my position or even my superior's position, you only need to ask. Of course, in exchange, we hope that we could have your loyalty and your creation, the mantra Dan with nine secret words, five. The girl's breath became disordered when she spoke the last few words. Nine secret words, is a powerful magic spell. It can develop the human body's potential and associate it with the vast and mysterious power of the universe. The mantra Dan with nine secret words, was Qin Long's original magic spell, based on the nine secret words. This spell enabled Qin Long to control earth, water, fire, and wind, communicate with the netherworld, travel to anywhere in the world within a moment, and also made him the world's most powerful human. This is, of course, impossible. Qin Long patted the bag around his waist and said with quirky laugh, if you have ever heard about me, 
you should have known that I am the type to seek revenge for the slightest grievance, and I'm also famous for never betraying my ancestors. Qing Long's body suddenly transformed into countless sharp wind knives and dashed towards the girl. Those wind knives soon gathered into a hazy swirl, enveloping the entire hall. The girl shook her head and sighed helplessly, I knew it, those damned idiot bosses insisted on spending so much effort in vain. With a cold laughter, the girl held out a golden bamboo slip, six, and threw it upward. Along with an earth dot shaking thunder, blood dot red lights emerged from the dark eye holes of the cross dot legged skeletons. With a buzzing sound, the red lights quickly converged into a huge blood dot red cage, firmly imprisoning Qing Long inside. The light cage remained motionless as it was hit by Qing Long's wind knives, all of the wind knives shattered into pieces. Outside, the dark clouds billowed over the eastern horizon and waves of lightning were seen, followed by the unceasing rumble of distant thunder. On the street, innumerable screams could be heard, people looked up at the sky in fear. They saw the clouds drifting and changing forms, behind the dense clouds, there was a gigantic purple serpent slithering above. Inside the pyramid, Qing Long fell down on his knees, blood smeared all over his body. In the light cage, 90.9 .9 light spears floated in the air, silently aiming towards him, in the very next second, all of those spears pierced his body. Damn! Does this weird stuff really have such a strong power? The girl excitedly caught the golden bamboo slip, which fell down from the air and shouted hoarsely, Qing Long, did you see that? You are the most powerful human dot yet you are so vulnerable in front of us. These skeletons, this bamboo slip, and that cauldron, they all came from the same place. They are the treasures from thousands of years ago. God, so amazing, according to the methods described on bamboo slip, arranging these skeletons in certain orientations can truly release this much magnificent power. The girl yelled hysterically. What that the dot hell is this? Qing Long moaned in pain and looked up. There are records in this bamboo slip which say that this is an ancient strategy, seven, as for the name dot sorry, our linguists have yet to decipher that. The girl shrugged and said, but these skeletons, they are called. Suddenly, purple lightning fell from the sky, and struck the crystal pyramid. All of the crystal glasses were instantly destroyed by the lightning, the girl and her people were burned into ashes, and the round three-dot-legged cauldron started to emit a faint multi-dot-colored light that wrapped around Qing Long's body. Qing Long roared in pain and his body twitched violently. With blood covering his entire body, he felt as though his life force, the essence of his body and his soul were all being rapidly extracted by the cauldron. The three dead-eyed skeletons simultaneously raised their arms and pointed at the sky, as if to cast a counterattack. The blood dot red light in their pupils condensed into a huge red dragon and rushed towards the purple lightning. The dragon vanished in the air once it collided into the purple lightning, at the same time, 90.93 dead eyed skeletons shook fiercely and exploded into golden dust. Qing Long was enveloped by a purple ray. He felt an inexhaustible power rush down from the sky and destroy everything in its path. The purple lightning then condensed into a human dot sized lightning sphere flashed across the air and disappeared. After a few seconds, everything subsided. The public square and the pyramid were gone without a trace, nothing was left. Qing Long he possesses unsurpassed wisdom and extremely strong spiritual power. He created the Mantra Dan with nine secret word, based on the nine secret words. He was known as the strongest human in the world. To retrieve the lost treasure, the round cauldron, which belonged to the ancient city of Liangzhu, Qing Long fell into a trap and was gravely injured. After that, he was influenced by an unknown power, unexpectedly traveled through space and time, and was reborn as Ji Hao in the Fire Crow Clan. 1. Demigod Half God, half Human 2. Zax A tool similar to a hatchet, used for cutting and dressing roofing slates. Old English Sikh's knife, related to Old Saxon saws and Old Norse sacks. 3. Cauldron 
Many cultures, including the ancient people of China and Greece, used cauldrons as ornaments, trophies, sacrificial altars, cooking vessels or tripods, and decorative ceramic pottery. 4. Liangzhou A mysterious, ancient city, located in the eastern country of Huaxia. 5. Mantra Dan with Nine Secret Words A mysterious magic spell, it can discover the deepest potential of the human body. 6. A Bamboo Slip One of the main medias for literacy in early China. 7. Ancient Strategy Refers to the tactical deployment of troops in coordination with mega sorceries. Chapter 1, Hunter You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 1 Hunter the Southern Wastelands, a boundless primitive jungle. Poisonous miasma spiraled around the treetops of the tall, ancient trees. The miasma reflected the sunlight, creating colorful rays of light that merged into a gorgeous rainbow. Drifting above was a floating island with a circumference of several hundred miles. Dozens of white dot dragon dot like waterfalls roared out from the edges of the island. A hurricane blew by, dispersing the waterfalls into a cloud of mist. Dozens of rainbows were dancing around in the mist, complementing the colorful miasma circling around the treetops. Ji Hao was standing on the edge of the island, gazing down at the vast southern wasteland jungle. A breeze ruffled Ji Hao's hair. He had a determined and delicate face and a pair of deep, mysterious eyes, that shone brightly. Whenever Ji Hao focused his gaze on a certain area, nine dark purple and golden flash marks, one, would suddenly appear around the pupils of his eyes, which, although seemed dignified and mysterious, made others feel uncomfortable to directly look at them. A simple leather skirt wrapped around his waist. Two sharp eyebrows struck out from his temple, his nose stood tall and straight, and his lips were angular and broad. From time to time, the corners of his mouth would form a faint, mocking smile. This handsome and attractive young man, Ji Hao, didn't seem to take anything to heart. Ji Hao looked like a pine which was firmly rooted in the rocks, no matter how fierce the wind and the rain were or how heavy the thunder and lightning roared, he seems would stay immovable and indestructible like a mountain. A gigantic crow with a wingspan of more than thirty feet, was standing beside Ji Hao. His red pupils seemed faintly blazed. The crow turned his head and looked around every now and then. Mr. Crow, we're just taking a stroll. Relax. Ji Hao patted one of the his talons and said, Later, we will get you a serpent to fill your stomach, then we will go to the Black Wind Valley. Let's see if we can find some wind dragon plant for Abba. The crow cawed a few times then intimately rubbed Ji Hao's head with its sharp beak. Ji Hao raised his head and stretched his arms. He yawned and said, Comfortable, so comfortable. No need to stay with those old grandpas and study grass. Tree bark. Snake teeth. Or poison sacks. So nice. Hey, are there really people who do not fear death? Don't these stinky snakes know that this jungle belongs to us, the Fire Crow Clan? This is the Fire Crow Clan's territory, said Ji Hao. He looked around, then suddenly widened his eyes and pointed down at the jungle. A group of topless, sturdy, and two-dot-meter-dot-tall men, with scars slashed all over their bodies, were swaggering around in the jungle. They were carrying a variety of hunted prey on their shoulders. Gee how looked carefully, there were tigers, leopards and bears, each of them were tens of feet tall, like a small mountain of meat. Bastards! This is the Fire Crow Clan's hunting grounds. Those animals are ours. These animals, even the smallest one can feed a kid for a whole year. If you would get them skinned and cleaned, you could even trade for three young women with those furs. Ji Hao shouted out. He opened his arms, locked his fingers together, too, and cast a spell. Suddenly, the waterfall closest to him rumbled and no longer fell straight down. A mysterious power tilted the waterfall thirty degrees towards those men in the jungle. Those black water serpent clan warriors were happily walking in the jungle, while the waterfall transformed into a heavy downpour and fell onto their heads. They saw the waterfall, laughed out loud, 
opened their mouths and headed up to drink the chilly and sweet water pouring down from the sky. The man who walked in the front had a ten-dot foot. Long single, horn serpent coiled around his waist, which swayed its body leisurely. The sudden bath seemed to make it feel incomparably joyful. The single, horn serpent is the Blackwater Serpent Clan's special battle beast. Only elite warriors had the qualifications to have a horned serpent as a contract fighting beast, help them with killing in the battle. In the torrential rain, the water droplets suddenly turned into lines then slowly gathered into transparent water ropes, which silently and abruptly wrapped around the men's necks. Enemies. A sneak attack roared the leader, his voice full of fear. Had they just been attacked by a water magic sorcerer? But to sneakily attack enemies in a torrential rain is one of the Blackwater Serpent Clan specialties. In the southern wastelands, the Blackwater Serpent Clan's archenemy was the Fire Crow Clan, who were experts at fire spells. They never had heard of a Fire Crow Clan Magus warrior who could cast a water spell. Ji Hao changed his hand gesture. The water ropes shook violently and sent the men flying. One after another, they heavily smashed onto the trees and fainted. Only the leader struggled up, ripped apart the water rope from his neck, and tore it into countless water droplets. A water dot tank dot sized pit appeared on the tree trunk behind him, clearly showing just how strong his body was. The coward who only dares to use sneak attacks, show your face. The man jerked out a long spear and growled angrily. The single dot horned serpent uncoiled itself from the man's waist, nimbly moved around in the heavy rain, and spat out cold black smoke fitfully from time to time. Mr. Crow. Go. Ji Hao hopped onto the crow's back. The gigantic crow opened his wings and let out a sharp caw, rushing down towards the furious man. The floating island was a few miles above the ground. The crow diving down at lightning speed, reached the forest within the span of a few breaths. Once the Blackwater Serpent Clan's warrior saw the crow coming, his face twisted in fear that even hardly looked like a human face. He screamed out, Fire Crow! Fire Crow! The Holy Land Protector! The Fire Crow swiped downwards with its talon, the black, steel dot-like talon gently bumped into the man's body, the man's body then exploded into a cloud of dense bloody mist and splashed everywhere. The single, horned serpent turned around in fear and tried to flee, but the fire crow opened its beak toward the serpent and spewed out a lava dot like red flame. The single, horned serpent hissed loudly as it was burnt to a wisp of smoke. Several ancient trees were also set ablaze by the fire, like a few torches. After that, the fire crow spread out its wings, landed on a branch, and proudly cawed towards the sky. Ji Hao patted the fire crow's head and leapt down into the woods. Not far away, there was an enormous tree with vines coiled around it. Ji Hao neatly selected several hundred dot year dot old dragon vines and weaved them into a rope. Then tied the fainted men and all the hunted animals together with it. BVEC, let's bring them back first. Mr. Crow, let's go. Ji Hao hopped on the fire crow's back again, then whistled sharply. The fire crow picked up the captives and animals, flapped his wings, and flew south. With a few flaps, the crow rushed high into the sky. His jet dot black plumage started emitting a faint, fiery light, the crow transformed into a streak of flames and flew far into the distance, soon disappeared. About an hour later, a majestic mountain blocked their way. On the mountaintop, thousands of mulberry trees were standing. Tens of huge bird nests could be seen on the treetops. Hundreds of colossal crows, even bigger than the fire crow under Ji Hao's feet, were hovering around those trees. They were still a few hundred miles away from the mountain when a stream of fire shot towards them. A three-dot-meter tall muscular man was standing on the flames and growled loudly at Ji Hao, Hao. You snuck away again. How old do you think you are? You're just a little kid. Aren't you afraid of being snatched away by a large bird? Pausing for a second, after seeing the captives and hunted animals in the fire crow's talons, 
the brawny man laughed out loud and waved his fists, you really are our big brother, Ji Xia's son. Where did you catch these stinky snakes? Now we're going to have enough mining slaves, for the mines in the back of the mountain. He hesitated for a second, then frowned and continued, you should go back first. Brother Ji Xia's distant cousin came dot and he brought his people dot this guy. Is not amiable at all, I'm afraid he has not come with any good intentions. Ji Hao's facial expression changed. He tapped the fire crow's head. The crow then sped up and headed towards the deep valley below the massive mountain. One, dark golden and purple marks. A series of symbols which contain mysterious power. Two, in mysterious eastern culture, magi and magus priests usually cast their magics by locking their fingers together in certain motions while chanting magic spells. Chapter 2, Malice You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 2. Malice the fire crow darted out, transforming into a streak of flames. Ji Hao gazed at the valley below while standing on the head of the fire crow. The crow cawed and unfolded its wings, gliding through the hundreds of feet wide gaps between mountain cliffs and mountain peaks. Soon after, his view became broad, a magnificent valley appeared in front of him. The valley was hundreds of miles long, the widest part of the valley was over 30 miles. The adjacent lofty mountainside is known as the Black Gold Mountain, the holy land of the Fire Crow clan. Fire crows are legendary creatures, known to be the most powerful fighting beasts of the Fire Crow clan. The ancient, legendary three-legged golden fire crow was the common ancestor of both the Fire Crows and the Fire Crow clan. A mulberry woods were planted at the end of the valley, in an area spanning tens of miles, and countless nests were built atop those towering mulberry trees. A large group of fire crows were hovering silently above the woods. When Ji Hao and Mr. Crow arrived at the mulberry woods, all of the crows hovering in the air stopped and landed on the branches, silently gazing at them. After a while, all those crows slowly spread their wings, moving their chests down to salute Mr. Crow in their own special way. Ji Hao leaped from the head of Mr. Crow and whistled. Mr. Crow flapped his wings and darted out, again transforming into a streak of flames, hovered around in the air thousands of feet from the ground and flew towards the gold black mountain. Numerous young fire crows silently stared at Ji Hao with their red eyes. The mulberry forest was filled with a strange and solemn atmosphere. Ji Hao waved his hands to the young fire crows and walked away, following a trail, which was narrow and meandering, less than three feet wide. The rustling sound of leaves could be heard as wind blew across the branches. From a distance, the mulberry forest seemed to have a circumference of only ten miles, but when viewed from below, it seemed vast and endless. After running along the tail for a few minutes and left a large piece of shadow behind his body, Ji Hao sighted two towering trees, which were so thick that took hundreds of people to put their arms around them, however, these two trees were completely invisible from outside of the woods. The two trees were twenty meters apart from each other. Their branches entwined and formed an archway, which emitted a faint, fiery glow. Ji Hao walked through the archway, and felt that the air was blazing hot. A meadow of forest came into view. Noel Duran at the end of the forest stood a huge dome made of wood. At the top of the dome, there was a 30-foot thick wooden foundation, upon which a platform was built. On the platform was the gigantic skeleton of a golden fire crow with the wingspan of hundreds of feet wide. Although, there was only a skeleton of this gold fire crow remaining, Ji Hao sensed that the skeleton possessed a vast, strong, mysterious and inexhaustible power, which enveloped the entire woods. At first glance, the skeleton seemed like the blazing sun, floating in the air. Even more astonishing was the fact that this golden fire crow skeleton had three leg bones. Ji Hao bowed three times before the skeleton and crossed his fingers to pray for a while in a low voice. After praying, he silently walked to the door and peeked through the cracks between the door and its frame. The rooms were very broad, seemingly large enough to accommodate thousands of people. 
This was the Fire Crow Clan's council room, accessible only to leaders and elders for discussion of the most important matters of the clan. The floor was paved with stones, a blazing bonfire was set in a fireplace that had been built into the center of the room. A skinned beast hung over the fire and was being grilled till it sizzled and had a golden luster, large drops of fat dripped down into the flame, gee how could even smell the thick scent of grilled meat. Tens of clay jars were placed next to the fireplace. A few scrawny, elderly men and several muscular, middle-aged men used these jars to occasionally fill their stomachs with liquor. Tens of sturdy men and the same number of elderly men sat around the fireplace while drinking with a serious face. No one was talking, besides the sounds of pouring while and cutting meat, only the sound of blazing flame could be heard. At the time of Ji Hao's arrival, Half of the beasts had already been eaten and, after he looked around for a few minutes, the beasts' bones were chopped into pieces to extract and eat the marrow. Those men also finished the liquor without leaving a single drop. A sturdy dot looking man, who was over three dot meter tall, eyes narrowed like snake eyes and long hair bound into a thick braid in the back, displayed a hint of menace on his face. Suddenly, he grabbed a jar and swung it to the ground, smashing the jar and underlying stones into pieces. With a loud noise, the silence was broken. We ate and drank enough, let's talk. The man slowly stood up, his skin steaming. In an instant, the room was filled with hot air and seemed much smaller than before. Ji Xia, you are not the same as ten years ago, you are no longer the strongest warrior amongst us. Look how skinny you are. After breaking your magus acupoints a decade ago, you no longer are a senior magus. Now you are just an ordinary person. The man was pointing at another man, who faced the door. He continued, what qualification do you have to be our leader? What makes you eligible to lead us, the guardian warriors of the holy land? Why do you still comfortably hold the highest power within our clan? The man who was being pointed at, slowly stood up. His shoulders were broad and he was tall, even taller than the provocative man. However, no muscle could be seen on his body. His skin seemed tightly attached to his bones, making him look like a skeleton and could even be blown away by a gust of wind. He was Ji Xia, Ji Hao's father and the former strongest warrior of the Fire Crow clan. However, when Ji Hao was born, he was ambushed by the Fire Crow clan's sworn enemy, the Black Water Serpent clan. He was seriously injured while protecting his son. From that day onwards, his body had continued to deteriorate year after year. Some of the fellow clansmen believed that he had lost his power and strength. Ji Hao clenched his fists and gazed at Ji Xiao. Ji Hao's mind flashed back to that battle, clearly remembering that Ji Xiao fought desperately to protect Ji Hao, using his own body to block all of the enemy's attacks. Ji Hao had felt his father's boiling, hot blood splash on him. Ji Hao threw a sideways glance towards the provocative man. So, Ji Mu, my brother, what do you have in mind? said Ji Xia while calmly smiling. Ji Mu didn't answer. A boy jumped abruptly up, pointing at Ji Xia's nose, and shouted, You old waste. Do we need another talk here? Just take your Chini clan woman, your little bastard and get out of here. Let my father be the leader. My father will take care of our holy land and our people. The boy held his head high, puffed and continued, the worship ceremony is near, all the leaders will come to the holy land and worship our ancestors. In front of all those clan leaders, you should resign and leave the holy land. Old waste. Chini clan woman. Ji Hao sneered, kicked the door open, and rushed into the room without a second thought. Little bastard, who are you talking about? Ji Hao shouted. He quickly locked his fingers together and spat towards the bonfire. A wisp of flame soared towards the boy. The unexpected, raging fire burnt the boy's hair and eyebrows into a puff of smoke. Chapter 3 Challenge You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 3 Challenge the boy was not prepared for this fire. Fire Crow Clan's warriors, however, were born with the talent to control fire. 
The boy, cursed in rage, patted his body and put out the flame, soon, only wisps of smoke were left around his body. Ji Hao proudly looked at the boy's bald head and loudly said, Ha, a waste who couldn't even stand a handful of fire, who gave you the guts to clamor around here. Ji Xia, with his arms folded across his chest, amusedly looked at Ji Hao, while he remained silent. Several elderly men who sat around the bonfire, happily nodded and laughed oddly at Ji Hao. These elderly men seemed to be the eldest among the people present. Amongst a group of muscular men who were sitting in front of Ji Xia, one man stood up. He was not shorter than Ji Xia, but was born with a slim stature. Unlike other warriors, no muscles were to be seen on his body. His skin was white and tender and he didn't look at all like a tribesman of the southern primitive forest. His long hair was tied into a braid by three jade rings and laid on his back, bright lights flashed through his slender eyes, which made him look like a cunning person. Wu, do not humiliate our family. His voice was cold, feminine, and gentle, emanating a gloomy atmosphere. The boy, whose hair and eyebrows had just burned, shouted and took a big step towards Ji Hao. He moved nearly a hundred feet in a single step, and then threw a punch to Ji Hao's face. He simultaneously growled, Bastard! You only dare to attack from behind. I am Ji Wu, son of the powerful Ji Shu. The wind brought by Ji Wu's fists blew across Ji Hao's long hair, straightening every single strand backwards, pulling against his scalp and causing great pain. So powerful. Ji Hao immediately realized that Ji Wu was at least three times stronger than himself. Physically speaking, it was impossible for Ji Hao to endure this punch. Ji Hao's fingers changed form and locked together, his body flashed, exploding into seven or eight blurred shadows and moved away. Ji Wu's fist thundered in the air without even touching Ji Hao's shadow. Ji Hao mumbled a spell and tens of arm dot thick, fiery serpents flew from the bonfire and rushed, under Ji Hao's control, towards Ji Wu. Ji Xia breathed gently and smiled, looking at those flying, fiery serpents and said, Honorable elders, Hao has been learning magic from you all these years, it seems he has already made some achievements. Several elderly men laughed and nodded triumphantly. An elder whose eyes were shining with a green, fiery light said, How has excellent talent in Magus Priest sorceries. He will most likely become the first supreme Magus in our Fire Crow clan in 10,000 years. Ji Xia and several warriors sitting beside him smiled, while Ji Shu and his followers, who sat in front of them, frowned simultaneously. Ji Shu, the delicate and beautiful man, growled, Wu. Ji Hao is a legendary genius, you must be careful. In the meantime, Ji Shu threw a glance of discontent towards those elders. These elders were the most respected Magus priests in the Fire Crow clan, their bias towards Ji Hao was completely obvious. Ji Wu let out a growl and a shield dot shaped tattoo on his left arm lit up, a metal buckler darted out of his arm along with a stream of fire, one, shielding his upper body from behind. This bronze buckler was exquisitely crafted with a totem inlaid on its surface, a tower with a bloody eye floating above. This shield looks so familiar. Ji Hao gazed at the delicate totem, immediately shocked. His hands subconsciously locked together, he had only used 30% of his power to control the fiery serpents before, but now all of his force erupted at once. Tens of fiery serpents suddenly expanded, devouring each other. Soon, three hundred foot dot long, fiery dragons appeared and, along with the fierce sound of wind, collided against the shield. With a loud buzzing noise, twelve fist dot sized twisted symbols, too, emerged from the surface of the shield, a three dot feet dot thick cyan light shot tens of feet away from the shield, the light caused friction and collided with the three fiery dragons, making a muffled, explosive sound. Ji Wu held the shield and resisted the tremendous power of the fiery dragons. His body slightly trembled, but he did not take a single step back. Dot, <clears throat> so you are Ji Hao. The legendary child who was able to speak right after birth, learned how to run when you were a day old, 
and capable of controlling flames when only being a month old. Ji Wu resisted the flames with the shield and growled, but why re you so weak? You are too weak, ah, Ji Hao, you couldn't even harm my hair. Ji Hao laughed oddly, releasing control of the three rapidly shrinking, fiery dragons, and looked at Ji Wu, harm your hair. Do you still have any hair that I can harm? Hey, how does being bald feel like? Ji Wu was being provoked by Ji Hao's words. His eyes turned red and his body suddenly lit up, a faint, fiery light erupted outwards from his head. While laughing, Ji Hao grasped towards the wall, a spear with a flint spearhead and wooden handle darted out from a wooden shelf and fell steadily into Ji Hao's hands. With a loud shout, Ji Hao held the long spear, which was two times longer than his height, and twirled it around in his hands. An intense power ran from his palms into the spear, a series of red spell symbols lit up on the spear and a stream of flames erupted from the flint spearhead. Ji Hao's spear collided hard with Ji Wu's shield. A large fire appeared around Ji Hao and Ji Wu, the spear appeared to be a dragon within the fire. In an instant, Ji Hao stabbed more than a hundred times, the spear intensely pummeled the shield, blazing flame and cyan light collided against each other and created a loud, piercing noise. After attacking over a hundred times, Ji Hao stopped and took a deep breath. Ji Wu then pushed the shield forward, the three fiery dragons exploded and a strong force emitted from the shield. A tyrannical power, too powerful for Ji Hao to withstand with his physical strength, was sent to Ji Hao's body through his arms. Ji Hao retreated as the spear was knocked into the air by the tremendous force. Ji Wu silently waved his right arm and an axe tattoo lit up, a dark, metal axe appeared in his hand. Ji Wu waved the axe, relentlessly chopping towards Ji Hao's head. Ji Hao looked Ji Wu in the eye, he sensed bloodthirst from within Ji Wu's eyes. Was this guy really planning to kill him here? Fingers crossed, Ji Hao activated multiple magic spells. His body suddenly disappeared. A whirlwind manifested behind Ji Wu and Ji Hao appeared within the whirlwind, catching the spear which was falling from the sky and smashing it onto Ji Wu's back with all of his strength. Ji Wu was hit by the spear and slammed into the wall, dozens of weapons fell from the wooden shelf and hit his head. Ji Hao used all of his strength in this attack. His internal power, free, formed a spot of light, which intensely pulsed between his eyebrows, after which all of his power suddenly erupted. A gentle yet blazing force invaded Ji Wu's body through his bones and muscles, intensely shaking his internal organs. Ji Wu felt the blazing force inside, as though a bomb exploded within his chest, blood spurted from his mouth, quickly turning into flames, and burning on the ground. Ji Wu looked like a bear that was kicked in the ass by someone else. He shouted and stood up, picking up the axe in an attempt to continue the fight. Enough. Ji Xia stood up and growled. Enough. This is the place for clan meetings, not for you brats to fight. Ji Xu sniffed coldly and said with a feminine voice, Big brother Ji Xia, why not let those brats finish the fight, let us see who's the winner. The two of us are competing for the position of leader, let our kids compete as well. Just let everyone watch this show. Ji Xia took a deep breath and said in a low voice, everything will be settled according to the rules of our ancestors. In the ancestors' worship ceremony in two weeks, we will settle everything with our power. Ji Wu reddened with shame. He dropped the shield and axe on the ground, pointed at Ji Hao, and yelled, Ji Hao, Will you fight me in the worship ceremony, just like a real man? If you lose, you will hide your balls and be a coward for your entire life. Ji Hao inhaled coldly, slowly raising his right hand across his neck, accepting the challenge. 1. Weapon Tattoos Special magic which allows magi to fuse with their weapons, the weapons will appear in the form of tattoos on their skin and will materialize in accordance to the magi's will. 2. Spell Symbols These marks are unique symbols which contain mysterious power, usually connecting to certain magic, and will appear under the Magus's will. 3. Internal Power 
Different from spiritual power, internal power is a force that exists and grows in both the physical body and the spiritual world of a magus. Can be improved through both internal and external means, and is able to transform into physical force. Chapter 4, Deal You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 4. Deal. The sun had set, day turned into night and darkness shrouded the southern wastelands. It was a starry night, fist-sized stars twinkled in the night sky. The mist slowly fell from the colorful stars, nourishing all living creatures. On the mountaintop of the gold black mountain, hundreds of gigantic fire crows were standing in a line at the edge of the cliff, their beaks open, silently absorbing energy from the starlight. Red starlight shrouded the gold black mountain. A huge whirlpool had formed above the mountaintop's mulberry trees. A stream of starlight energy poured into these trees through the whirlpool. Ji Hao was sitting on the roof, quietly gazing at this magical night view. Hands on his stomach, fingers locked together, one, and constantly changing motions to absorb the starlight energy. His slim body radiated a faint glow and seemed to have merged with the starlight. Mantra Dan with nine secret words, was a mysterious magic spell, capable of discovering the deepest potential of the human body, ultimately leading to the unity of heaven and human, too. Since birth, Ji Hao had focused on learning the Mantra Dan with nine secret words. With over a decade of practice, he had made a few achievements. His internal power, free, formed a mist-like spot of light, slowly rotating in the space between his eyebrows. How, get back to bed. Gazing at the sky every night, you can't fly to the sky anyway, can you? Ji Xia's good-natured voice sounded in the yard, but flying isn't too difficult, you will be able to fly when you become a supreme magus, said Ji Xia laughing. It was a well-known fact that not a single supreme magus had appeared in the Fire Crown clan for the past thousands of years. The Fire Crow clan could have been equal to the Bifong clan and the Rosefinch clan, for, but without the guidance of a supreme magus, they came under the authority of the Bifong clan. Although Ji Xia was convinced that his son, Ji Hao, was an unparalleled genius, he still had his doubts about the possibility that Ji Hao could become a supreme magus. Even with his good talent, Ji Hao still was a third-level novice magus, who had yet had to reach the ranks of junior magus. After junior magus it would be very difficult to become a senior magus. And the highest rank of supreme magus was unimaginable harder to reach. Okay. Ji Hao lazily said, stopping the movement of his fingers and jumped down from the roof. A fifty-feet-tall bear, covered with bronze-like, red, and shining fur, was lying in front of the wooden gate. Ji Hao fell right on his soft belly. The snoring bear opened one of his eyes and gently rubbed Ji Hao with his gigantic paws. Ji Hao put an unknown fruit into the bear's mouth, who swallowed the fruit without chewing or waking up. Fatty, sooner or later you'll be too fat to walk, and will lose the right to be Abba's mount, 5. Ji Hao kicked the bear's head. The fat bear had hidden his face with his paws. No matter how hard Ji Hao kicked, it seemed that the bear refused to wake up. Ji Hao shook his head and went into the room. Ching Fu was wearing a blue linen dress and sitting in the corner. She was holding a jade pestle, carefully grounding a herbal paste in a stone bowl. A wisp of cyan smoke spiraled down from Ching Fu's fingers through the pestle and blended into a herbal paste. As the residual material from the herb gradually started to melt, the herbal paste became clearer and more viscous, before it ultimately turned into a chunk of jade-like ointment. Ama. Ji Hao sat in front of Qing Fu, quietly looking at his mother. Qing Fu came from the Qing Yi clan, a small eastern clan which relied on the Fire Crow clan for protection. Women from this clan were born as magus priests, six, especially good at identifying and refining all kinds of drugs and medicines. Women from the Fire Crow clan were equally strong as the men. They are able to carry heavy weapons and hunt wild beasts in the jungle. Women from the Qin Yi clan were completely different in comparison, with slim, tender features and their white, soft skin. Qing Fu, Ji Hao's mother, 
had been the most talented magispriest in the Qin Yi clan, for the past hundreds years and also the most beautiful woman seen in a century. However, Qin Fu's beautiful face seemed a little pale today. She was less than thirty years of age, but her hair already turned gray and her lips were pale. Similar to the skin dot over dot bone looking Ji Xia, Qin Fu too was abnormally thin. While carefully grinding the ointment, Qin Fu smiled and said. How, I heard that you beat Ji Xu's son today. Ji Hao scratched his head, looked at Qin Fu and laughed. I used a sneak attack, but I didn't manage to actually hurt him. If it was a real fight, I would have no chance of winning. But if it would happen in the jungle, he would die thousands time over. While speaking and laughing, Ji Hao subconsciously showed a cold and cruel expression for a brief period of time. Qing Fu looked at Ji Hao, feeling overjoyed. She patted him and gently said. Ah, if that's the case then I don't have to worry anymore. Just don't be like your father, who is always trying to solve all the problems peacefully that I s it even possible to survive in the southern wasteland without being cruel and heartless. Qing Fu finished the ointment which had gained an exotic fragrance. She rubbed it slowly into twelve, thumb-dot-sized, round, cyan pills, carefully putting them into a jade bottle. How, you must keep those stories I told you in mind. My Qing Yi clan used to be a powerful and thriving clan in the east. However, one of our leaders, an old lady, was deceived and fooled by the enemy. The entire clan was almost annihilated. To save ourselves, we had to run to this southern wasteland and rely on the Fire Crow clan for protection. Qing Fu continued with a cold expression, in half a month, at the worship ceremony, if your father can survive, it will be fine. But, if he can't. Ji Hao looked down, quietly listening to Qing Fu. If your father is killed by Ji Shu during the ceremony, I will accompany him to his death. In that case you should leave the clan and focus on becoming stronger, return and avenge us, your Abba and Ama, by killing Ji Shu and his whole family. Ji Xia carried a large piece of meat and walked into the room. He looked at Qing Fu, smiled and said. Why say these things to Hao? I'm not going to lose the fight against Ji Shu in the worship ceremony. He wants to be the leader amongst our warriors, but, how easy does he thinks that is going to be? Ji Hao stayed silent. He hugged Qing Fu and walked upstairs to his bedroom. In the decennial ancestor worship ceremony, all leaders of the Fire Crows branch clans will come to the Holy Land in Gold Black Mountain to worship their ancestors. This is the only opportunity to make changes in the higher authority of the clan. Ten years ago, Ji Shu would not have any chance to win against Ji Xiao. However, the present Ji Xia had lost his magus acupoint, which resulted in a serious reduction of his strength. It was even possible that Ji Shu was speaking the truth when he said that Jia Xia's power had fallen back to the level of junior magus. Facing the aggressive Ji Shu and his people, would father be all right? What about mother? And without their protection, what would happen to me? This is not a peaceful place. In this land, People kill, said Ji Hao to himself. In recent years, he had seen enough of those miserable kids, whose clans had been eliminated by their enemies. For now, Ji Hao would not be able to survive in the outside world by himself. Power, he had to obtain more power as soon as possible. Even if he couldn't help his father, he had to enhance his strength as soon as possible and prepare for what might happen in the future. He closed the door and opened the window letting the stars lighten up the room. Ji Hao lied down on a piece of lion's fur and closed his eyes. His internal power was way bigger in comparison to his peers, which allowed him to easily get into his spiritual space, seven, through a short meditation. Hey, old man. I'm coming. I accept your deal, trade your, Butian Bulu magic spell, with my, mantra Dan with nine secret words, and don't forget what you promised me, said Ji Hao into the air, after getting into his spiritual space. After Ji Hao had spoken, a white fog formed and turned into a white, round platform, which floated in front of Ji Hao. 
A tall figure, who was sitting on the platform with his legs crossed, looked down at Ji Hao. Little guy, you will never lose anything or regret it by making a deal with me. 1. In mysterious Eastern culture, Magus release their powerful sorceries by lock their fingers together into certain motions and sometimes coordinate with magic spells. 2. The unity of heaven and the human. The highest achievement and the ultimate pursuit of a magus, which means to break the limitation of the human body and obtain the tremendous power from nature and heaven. 3. Internal power. Different from spiritual power, the internal power is a force exist and grow in both the physical body and the spiritual world of a magus, which can be improved through both internal and external means, and able to transform into physical force. 4. By Fong and Rosefinch. They both are legendary birds in ancient Eastern culture. 5. Mount. Animals to be sit and travel on. 6. Magus Priests. A special group of people among Magi. Magus Priests are good at all kinds of sorceries and magic spells, as well as drug. Making. Some of them may not be as physically strong as Magi warriors, however, they usually have great spiritual power. 7. Spiritual Space The spiritual space is an unique space in the form of spirit, existing each magus's mind. Magi are able to get themselves into their spiritual space by using their internal power. When a magus gets into his spiritual space, his body will also be in spirit form. A powerful magus can even get into spiritual spaces of others. Chapter 5 Gain You Are Listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5. Gain, just like the heaven and nature have imperfections, the human body too has its faults. This magic spell will enable you to absorb energy from the heaven and the nature to replenish your strength, read the man, who was sitting on the platform, out aloud. Ji Hao looked up at the blurry figure, who was a gigantic man and seemed to be even a hundred times bigger than the gold black mountain. Ji Hao had been aware of his existence in his spiritual space since the day he was born. However, even after trying his best for the past ten years, he still was unable to see the man's appearance clearly. The man's dark, glossy hair and long beard, which were fluttering, seemed miraculous and mysterious. His entire upper body laid bare, a simple apron which was made from a huge blade was wrapped around his waist, was the only piece of clothing he had on. For a decade, this man had wanted to make a deal with Ji Hao, but Ji Hao had always refused to do so. This time, however, Ji Hao and his family were under great pressure from Ji Xu and his son, so he had to take this risk. When the man spoke, raging thunder accompanied his voice. A large number of ancient, multicolored, glowing symbols continuously emerged and floated around his body. These symbols looked like birds, fishes, flowers and insects. It seemed inexpressibly mysterious. Immediately after the man stopped reading, all the colorful symbols rushed simultaneously towards Ji Hao and integrated peacefully with his body. Meanwhile, Ji Hao sensed a jolt coming from his soul, all of his knowledge about the mantra Dan with nine secret words had somehow been copied by the man. Around the man's body, Nine huge balls of light appeared and floated in a circle, each of them had an intense radiance, which could be compared to the sun. Not long after, the light balls merged with the man's body. The merge shook the man's body slightly, which caused a rainstorm inside Ji Hao's spiritual space. The torrential rain came with lightning and thunder. Ji Hao lowered his head and shivered. So amazing, exclaimed the man. Little guy, your mantra Dan with nine secret words, is capable of improving the soul and using the power of the universe. This is truly mysterious and amazing, I had never thought that in this world, there existed a magic spell as powerful as this. After hesitating for a moment, he lowered his voice and continued, if I would have known this magic spell earlier, I might have been able to understand and utilize my strength more effectively. I wouldn't have ended being such a loser, who doesn't even has the guts to face the world. Ji Hao felt dizzy after integrating with those ancient symbols. His soul and mind were filled with a huge amount of information. He was only a novice magus of the third level, 
his internal power was far from being sufficient to cope with the tremendous amount of information in such a small period. The Hbutian Balu magic spell activated involuntarily before he even could connect with his internal power. All his blood and power rushed towards his abdomen, where his lower Dantian, one, existed. His blood and power started to rotate, forming a small whirlpool. Ji Hao could sense a small, yet strong power coming from the whirlpool. Suddenly a little, multicolored flame burst out from the whirlpool and several multi-dot-colored symbols flashed momentarily, after which the flame disappeared. According to the information he had received, this occurrence signified the first step of the Butian Balu magic spell. The first stage of the spell had the following effects. 1. 90.9% .9 of the life energy that his food possessed would serve as nourishment for the flame inside his body too. The remaining 1% would nourish his internal power, making him stronger even though it was only the first stage of the spell, it made Ji Hao realize how strong and beneficial this spell really was. The first stage enabled him to increase his internal power through eating. For example, if he would eat a hundred dragons, he would receive the power of one dragon. Hey, does this mean I am going to be a glutton? While Ji Hao was surprised by the effect of the spell, he whined loudly. Old man, you want me to eat the entire mountain. How does this work? Does it really mean that as long I am not tired, I can keep eating endlessly? The more you eat, the stronger you will get, laughed the man. With a wave of his hand, two human dot head dot sized drops of blood appeared out of thin air and floated towards Ji Hao. One blood drop had a gold colored glow and the other had a purple colored glow. The gold colored drop radiated pride and power, while the purple colored drop radiated mystery and nobility. From the moment these blood drops appeared, Ji Hao could feel his body getting excited, as if it couldn't wait to merge with those drops of blood. The man looked down and said, Little guy, I won't take advantage of you. This is something extra that I gift to you. A drop of dragon blood and a drop of phoenix blood. They won't only be beneficial at the present, even in the future you will be reaping great benefits from them, the two blood drops exploded, transforming into gold and purple colored mist respectively and were absorbed by Ji Hao's body. Ji Hao body felt as if it was set ablaze, like his blood could boil and evaporate at any moment. It was so painful that he couldn't remain in his spiritual space and was forced to return to his physical body. He had to spend great effort to keep his muscles under control, to avoid crying and screaming from the pain. On his lean and slim body, pieces of muscles squirmed under his skin. His muscles and bones splintered and reorganized, becoming stronger. Dragons, too, were born as the most powerful creatures in the world. A newly born, purebred dragon was strong enough to go one dot on. One against a supreme magus. The gold-colored dragon blood completely remolded Ji Hao's body, making it a perfect human body. At the same time he sensed a warm stream continuously rushing into his soul, gradually making it stronger and pure. Phoenixes, three, were born with the purest of souls in the world, making every phoenix a master in magic manipulators. The purple-colored phoenix blood purified Ji Hao's soul and laid the perfect foundation for his future practices. The colorful flames rushed inside Ji Hao's Dantian, surprising him by the enormous improvement of his body and soul. Dot hunger. Ji Hao sensed an almost impossible to satiate hunger, which made him almost scream in agony. It felt like there was a black hole in his stomach, crazily devouring his muscles and flesh. Ji Hao jumped out of his window, hung his arms onto the framework of the roof and easily landed in the hall downstairs. All around the fireplace in the hall, twenty pieces of beast meat were hanging and being roasted. A thick layer of a salt.oil.mixed sauce was spread onto the meat. Ji Hao grabbed the leg of a saber-toothed tiger and took a bite. With a gentle bite, the human.waist.thick leg broke into two. With just a few bites Ji Hao finished the entire leg piece. After having eaten the leg, he felt a powerful stream of heat rushing into the multicolored flame, placed in his lower dantian. A small portion of the multicolored flame was absorbed by his body, 
which felt extremely pleasurable all over his body. Ji Hao ate the entire stock of twenty pieces of meat that were hanging there and being roasted. Suddenly he heard a muffled boom sound inside his body, he abruptly grew about half of an inch and his muscles swelled too. Ji Hao felt a strong sense of power rushing through his body and was ecstatic. Novice Magus Fourth Level 1. Dantian Traditionally, a Dantian is considered to be a center of life force energy of human body. The lower Dantian is particularly important as the an energy center, positioned near the lower abdomen of a human body. 2. Dragon Legendary creatures in Chinese mythology and folklore. The dragons have many animal dot like forms such as turtles, fish, and imaginary creatures, but they are most commonly depicted as snake dot like with four legs. In yin and yang terminology, a dragon is yang. Chinese dragons symbolize potent and auspicious powers, which is a symbol of power and strength. 3. Phoenix the mythological birds of East Asia that reign over all other birds. The males were originally called Fong and the females Huan. But such a distinction of gender is often no longer made and they are blurred into a single feminine entity so that the phoenix can be paired with the Chinese dragon, which is traditionally deemed male. Chapter 6 Parents You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 6 Parents while Ji Hao was cramming the roasted meat down his throat, Ji Xia and Qin Fu were peeking at him, through the slits of their bedroom door. Qin Fu smiled when she saw that both, Ji Hao's body and internal power, seemed to have increased. Ji Xia grinned, leaped through the window and ran towards the dark forest. He had to hunt more beasts for meat, because Ji Hao's appetite had increased. Ji Xia was strong and agile. He dashed through the village, without anyone noticing him. After going deep into the jungle, he mumbled to himself. Good, very good. The more he will eat, the stronger he will get. Excellent, he is becoming a true man. Then Ji Xia took a breath and laughed. Worthy of being my son. How has been secretive since he was a little kid what on earth did he learn from those Magus Priest, one, grandpas? Ah, what does it matter, it seems like a good thing, he is truly my son. At dawn, the jungle was shrouded by the morning fog. People in the Fire Crow clan's village had already awakened and begun their daily chores. On the mountaintop of the Gold Black Mountain, thousands of majestic fire crows flapped their fiery wings and flew towards the gold dot colored clouds in the sky. Down in the valley, Countless little fire crows were cawing and souring out from the mulberry woods, ultimately hovering above the mountain. A group of fire crow clan's warriors were holding their weapons, riding their contracted beasts, and headed towards the jungle, where they would, as usual, hunt for beasts. The women in the village were busy as well. They had to peel and clean recently hunted beasts. Metal ores, mined by the slaves, had to be classified and a large amount of plant filaments were required to be woven. There was always so much work to be done. The sky was getting brighter. Ji Hao stood on the roof, facing the east, while breathing slowly and deeply. Strands of lavender dot colored vapor seemed to be coming from the far east. Ji Hao inhaled the vapor into his body, while breathing slowly and carefully. The lavender dot colored vapor was the purest life force energy of the nature, only obtainable at dawn. Ji Hao mumbled the mantra Dan with nine secret words. Lin, Bing, Do, Zhe, Jie, Zhen, Lai, Qian, Xing. His hands locked together in front of his chest, continuously changing motions. The purest life force energy had been absorbed by Ji Hao's body and refined into his spiritual power, too. He quickly started to work up a sweat. Before the previous night, Ji Hao could only handle one strand of the lavender dot colored vapor, which already put a big strain on his body. However, after his body and soul had been improved by the blood of both the dragon and the phoenix, he had already taken 30.6 strands of life force energy, this morning. But it felt as if he had yet to reach his limit and could continue absorbing. Amazing. 
Chi Hao was very pleased. A faint fiery light emitted from his head. The deal he made with the mysterious man, living in his spiritual space, seemed to be the right choice at the moment. How? Bro, hundreds of younger kids passed by the spot where Ji Hao was standing. They were shouting and running. Each of them carried a huge stone, which looked the size of a small mountain. Ji Hao stopped his practice, smiled and waved to these kids. Those kids dashed out of his sight. On the surface of their stones, there were special markings, which were shining with an earthy dot yellow glow. Those markings were drawn by the elder Magus priests. These markings increased the weight of the stones by more than ten times their original weight. Dot, ay ay ay. These kids that they're on the brink of reaching the first level of novice Magus, soon all of them will become decent warriors, said Ji Hao, while looking at the kids. Improving physical strength was the most important thing for a novice magus. Only a solid body could serve as foundation for future training, which is required to become a magus warrior. Stones carried by those kids were made of Qinggang, the hardest rock in the southern wasteland jungle. Each of those stones had been carved into a three-dot square-dot feet cube. Also, the weight of the stone was used to measure strength. The weight of one stone cube was one unit of strength, called one stone. A novice magus of the first level had the strength of 10,000 stones, and at the second level the strength increased to 20,000 stones. Ji Hao was a novice magus of the fourth level, which meant that his strength was equivalent to 40,000 stones. But, that guy Ji Wu, Ji Hao frowned. After the fight in the meeting hall against Ji Wu, Ji Hao clearly realized that Ji Wu was way more powerful than him. The strong and fiery light emitted from Ji Wu's body showed that he had reached the tenth level, and his internal power might have already been triggered, free. If he went only two levels further, Ji Wu could advance to the ranks of Junior Magus. With Ji Hao's current strength and wizardry he had learned from the Magus Brius grandpas, it was not difficult for him to transform his body and have a few advantages. However, if he were to fight against Ji Wu face to face, Ji Hao's chances for victory would drastically decrease. Not to mention that even if he won, he would still have to face Ji Shu and his people. I have to eat more powerful beasts, Ji Hao talked to himself. How about asking Mr. Crow for help? Mr. Crow is on a level comparable to a senior magus, if I would ask him to hunt a hundred of junior magus level beasts for me. For, while Ji Hao was considering this, the smell of meat reached his nostrils. Qing Fu walked into the yard, waved to Ji Hao, and said. Hao. Come down. Your Abba has hunted you a serpent earlier this morning, come on in. Ji Hao looked at Qing Fu, leaped down from the roof and walked to the hall. The bronze.furred bear, Ji Xia's contract beast, was lying on his stomach in front of the door, looking at the roasted serpent and drooling. Ji Xia glanced at the bear, then threw a human.leg.thick firewood towards the bear. The bear was hit by the firewood, howled in pain and rolled away like a ball of fur. Get away, you fatty, said Ji Xia. The only thing you understand is eating. Sooner or later you'll be too fat to run, then I could eat you and find myself another contract beast. While Ji Xia was yelling at the bear, Ji Hao walked into the hall and glanced at the roasted beast. It was indeed a serpent. Its muscles were semi-dot-transparent and its bones were metal-dot-like, which meant that this serpent was a peak-level novice, magus beast. There were countless beasts living in the jungle, but a beast which reached this level was very rare and was hard to hunt. Abba. Ji Hao walked to the fireplace and took a seat. Hao, Ji Xia looked at Ji Hao and smiled, you ate all of our meat last night. I was afraid that your hunger hadn't satiated yet. Here, I got you a white ka serpent. White ka serpents were highly toxic, good at hiding and very difficult to hunt. Its bone marrow contained huge amounts of power. Qing Fu walked inside, rubbed Ji Hao's head, and said. Hao, you ate that much meat yesterday, I saw your strength increase, which is a good thing. Here, you should eat more. 
Ji Xia and Qing Fu looked at Ji Hao with broad smiles on their faces. It seemed, they had no intention of asking Ji Hao about his behavior last night. Ji Hao looked at his parents and felt deeply touched. They never questioned him. They had always been protecting and supporting him as much as they could. Yes, they were his parent, and as far as he was concerned, they were the greatest people in the world. Okay, I'm just a bit hungry. Abba, Ama, thanks. Ji Hao laughed. He grabbed a knife and cut a bucket dot thick tail from the serpent off, stuffed it through his throat, without even chewing. Once Ji Hao ate the serpent tail, he sensed that the serpent's bones and muscles turned into a stream of heat, rushing towards the flame in his dantian. Soon, a small strand of the flame was absorbed by his body. Ji Xia and Qing Fu had noticed that Ji Hao's muscles were swelling. At the same time, sounds of his bones snapping could be heard. Ji Hao even looked slightly taller than before. They laughed happily. Ji Xia said. Good, very good, Hao, just eat whatever you want, Abba can hunt you anything. Qing Fu rubbed Ji Hao's head with a smile on her face. Then, someone knocked the door. They heard a mocking voice. Is Qing Fu, the Magus Priest, at home? I have some drug dot making problems that I would like to consult with her. 1. Magus Priests A special group of people among Magi. Magus Priests are good at all kinds of sorceries and magic spells, as well as drug dot making. Some of them may not be as physically strengthful as Magi, however, they usually have great spiritual power. 2. Spiritual Powers Slightly different from the internal power, the spiritual power of a magus can be seen as the power of the soul. Unlike the internal power, spiritual power cannot directly turn into the physical attack. However, strong spiritual power is one of the most important foundation of magus practicing. Strong spiritual power is also highly necessary for all kinds of sorceries. 3. Although Magi warriors were born with internal power and spiritual power, which were naturally contained in their body and soul. However, without enough physical strength and a strong body, they neither could trigger nor manipulate their internal and spiritual power. For, all living creatures naturally have life force energy and internal power. They naturally learn to absorb life force energy from the nature to grow their internal power. The quality of internal power of a beast is as same as a magus, therefore, it can be seen as in a certain level as a magus. Chapter 7, Defiance You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 7 Defiance Ji Hao opened the door and saw Ji Wu, who was standing in front of the door, shaking his body impatiently. His arms were crossed around his chest. Dot, ha. Ji Wu arrogantly looked down on Ji Hao, who was a lot shorter and thinner than himself, laughed out loud and said aggressively. Ji Hao, I'll kill you at the worship ceremony. Ji Hao looked up at Ji Wu, twitched the corner of his mouth and sneered, kill me. Who was nearly beaten to tears by me, yesterday. You wanna kill me? Ha, huh, I don't think so. Ji Wu grinded his teeth and stared at Ji Hao. He looked so angry that his eyes nearly popped out of the eye sockets. Yesterday, in front of his own father and all those elders in the clan, he was beaten till he had coughed up blood, by a Ji Hao, who was thinner, weaker, and at a much lower level than himself. For him, this was his greatest humiliation, he couldn't even face his own father after that. You bastard! Ji Wu angrily waved his fist, attempting to punch Ji Hao. At that moment, a beautiful woman walked out from behind Ji Wu, gently grabbed his arm and pulled him backwards. The woman was slim yet full of strength. As a result of her gentle pulling, Ji Wu staggered tens of steps backwards and fell on the ground. Ji Wu sat on the ground, utterly embarrassed. Ama! I'm going to kick this little bastard's ass! Ji Wu shouted out. Hey, you little bastard! Who are you talking about? Ji Hao crossed his arms, looked at the woman standing in front of him and laughed. Ji Wu was going to say something else, 
but the woman scolded him loudly, causing Ji Wu to shut his mouth fearfully. The woman narrowed her eyes and looked at Ji Hao from head to toe for a while, then said with a sneer, Such a pretty boy, as pretty as your ama. But you're so thin and weak. Look at your skinny arms and legs, you should be careful, don't let those beasts in the jungle break you legs. Ji Hao looked back at the woman. She was a bit taller than Qing Fu. Compared to Qing Fu, who had a gentle and mild character, this woman seemed to have a terrible temper. This was a beautiful, sexy woman, with attractive breasts, hip, bright red lips, and sharp dark brown eyes, giving a charming yet dangerous vibe. I don't believe that there exists a beast in this world who could break my leg. Ji Hao stared at the woman's voluptuous breasts, and said, But Appa, one, you're the one who should actually be careful. Those stinky snakes from the Blackwater Serpent Clan have often been coming and pestering recently. Appa, imagine, if you were to be kidnapped by those guys, there would be at least a hundred of stinky snakes coming to your bed every night. The woman's expression suddenly turned darker. Appa. Did she look like those ugly old women in the village? And don't even mention what Ji Hao said about those stinking snakes. You son of a bitch, growled Ji Wu, how dare you talk to Ama like that? The tattoos on both of his arms lit up, a shield and an axe erupted from his arms, which he held in his arms. Just as Ji Wu was going to attack Ji Hao, a huge bear showed up suddenly. The bronze dot furred bear standing straight behind Ji Hao, seemed like a small mountain. The bear stared at Ji Wu and drooled as if it was staring at a piece of roasting meat. The damn, the shock of seeing the bear rooted Ji Wu to the spot. He felt like a frog which was being preyed on by a serpent, and couldn't move even a little bit. He took two steps back, while trembling, and almost fell on the ground again. Despite the bear being fat and lazy, it was Ji Xia's contracted beast. The bear's strength had nearly reached the level of senior magus. How could a novice magus like Ji Wu face the bronze bear and not be frightened? The woman waved her finger in the air, the scary atmosphere, created by the bear, was soon expelled. She looked at Ji Hao with a cold face and said. You little bastard, how old do you think you are? Do you know the things that men and women do? Ha, Qing Fu, I came here for you, are you going to let this little bastard keep talking nonsense here? He he. The woman sneered and waved her hand. A gray mist sprayed out from her sleeve toward Ji Hao's face. Ji Hao smelled a terrible scent, quickly recognizing seven different highly toxic herbs from it, including the bone etcher plant and the duan chong grass. Ji Hao stepped back fast, creating an outburst of wind. The bronze dot furred bear growled and stood up again. A gale wind blew out from its gigantic mouth, blocking the mist for one second. The woman flicked her finger, turning the mist into two strands of smoke, dashing towards the bear's nostrils. Jiang Yao, you should know that I only know how to make potions that save lives that I know nothing about your poisons, Qing Fu sighed. A green mist sprayed through the windows of Ji Hao's family house, wrapping the gray mist. The gray mist and the green mist quickly devoured each other, turned into a white fog and dissipated in the air. Jiang Yao, her beautiful face turned sour, and said coldly. Qing Fu, I'm surprised that after they broke your magus acupoint and dropped you to the junior magus level, you actually managed to make some improvement in potion dot making. Qing Fu stayed silent. Ji Hao stood behind the fat bear, dragging its short tail to keep it from attacking Jiang Yao, he said. Indeed, my ama dropped from the senior level, but she still is a genius on potion dot making. She has always been concentrating on healing and detoxifying our people, who needed it, with her potion dot making knowledge. It's only natural for her to make certain breakthroughs. Jiang Yao sneered again and yelled. Ji Xia, big brother. I came all the way to visit you and you are just gonna let this kid deal with me here. Ji Xia stayed silent. Qin Fu said. Jiang Yao, are you visiting us or challenging us? If you want to talk, we will talk at the worship ceremony. 
If you want to compete against me in potion dub making, we will do that at the worship ceremony too. How about that? Jiang Yao laughed and glared at Qin Fu. She said in a soft yet dramatic voice. Okay, we shall do what you said. You and me that we have a lot of catching up to do at the ceremony. After all, Ji Shu, my husband, is going to become the leader amongst the Fire Crow Clan's warriors. Ji Hao coughed and said. Hey. My Abba, Ji Xia, is the only leader of the Fire Crow Clan. Jiang Yao smiled maliciously, she suddenly turned her slim waist and raised her arm, and clawed towards Ji Hao with her dark dot green fingernails. Jiang Yao's fingernails created a sharp wind and scratched Ji Hao's face from feet away, he couldn't open his eyes. The wind had a nauseating smell, obviously, there was something highly toxic on Ji Yao's fingernails. While clawing, Jiang Yao yelled. You little rat. This is how you speak to elders. Jiang Yao was a senior magus priest, very good at using poison. Ji Hao stepped backwards and couldn't even keep his eyes open. Qing Fu suddenly showed up in front of Jiang Yao. She opened her mouth, spewed a thumb dot sized, white jade pearl, which was shining with a faint white light. The jade pearl hit heavily on Jiang Yao's palm. Jiang Yao screamed, drew back her hand quickly as if she had touched a flame. She covetously looked at the jade pearl and said, Mu Xing Pearl, such a treasure that it's a shame that Qing Fu your magus acupoint had been broken. Now, you're such a waste. You don't deserve a treasure like this. I'll be expecting you at the ceremony. Jiang Yao finished her words and put her right hand on Ji Wu's shoulder. Suddenly, their bodies bursted into streams of fiery lights and then disappeared. Qing Fu put the Mu Xing Pearl back into her mouth. She wobbled, nearly falling on the ground. Ji Hao opened his eyes, he noticed that there was a wisp of blood in the corner of Qing Fu's mouth. Ji Hao's eyeballs suddenly turned blood dot red for a moment and went back to normal. Ji Xia's voice came from the room. Hao, come in, you haven't finished your meal. Ji Xia took a breath and said in a lower voice. How dare they show up here and treat us like that? Do they really think that I'm trash? Ji Hao silently walked back to the lobby, grabbed a piece of meat and started to gobble it down. 1. Appa Old ladies In China, children sometimes call their grandmas as Appa. Chapter 8 Different Races You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 8 Different Races Serpent Species Have Tremendous Physical Strength, With the White Ka Serpents Being Especially Powerful. The physical strength of a peak, novice magus level white ka serpent was ten times better than that of a tenth dot level novice magus. Ji Hao had eaten an entire white ka serpent, which had improved his physical strength to another level. He stretched his body in the yard and cast a shout to the sky. He sensed great power rushing through his bones and muscles. Yesterday, Ji Hao had become a fourth level novice magus. Today he had gained another 40.000 stones of strength after eating an entire white ka serpent. Ji Hao laughed aloud happily. If he could eat ten more beasts like this white ka serpent before the worship ceremony, Ji Wu would no longer be a threat to him. A white ka serpent has 40,000 stones of power, Ji Hao said to himself. After having exercised in the yard for a while, he took a deep breath, and gave an ear dot piercing whistle towards the gold black mountain. With the great internal power, gained by practicing the mantra Dan with nine secret words, the sound of his whistle reverberated through the jungle without fading. From a towering mulberry tree on the gold black mountain, a gigantic fire crow rose high in the air. The crow hovered around the tree and flew towards Ji Hao, while its feathers were emitting a faint, fiery light. The crow folded its wings, transformed into a beam of light and arrived above the yard in the span of few breaths. Ji Xia stood in front of the door, nodded sincerely to the fire crow and said. Mr. Crow, thanks for always keeping an eye on Ji Hao. The fire crow was hovering in front of Ji Xia. It narrowed its eyes, tilted its head, 
and called to Ji Xiao. Ji Hao hopped on the crow's head, laughed and said. Mr. Crow. Let's go somewhere further today. Do you remember where we found the nest of the golden? Wing bees. Let's go, dot with a long dot lasting, piercing sound, the fire crow soared straight up into the sky, flicked its wings, transformed into a light stream, and disappeared quickly into the clouds. Ching Fu slowly walked to the door, watched Ji Hao and the crow disappearing, frowned, and said to Ji Xiao. Jiang Yao came to our home and tried to attack Hao today, Xia, these people really want us dead. Ji Xia nodded, got on the bronze dot furred bear's back and left. He didn't say a word, but a faint flame appeared around his head. The bear roared, with a few threads of saliva hanging on the corner of its mouth, dashed towards the jungle. Ji Xia whistled a few times, hearing which a group of muscular warriors came out from the nearby cabins. They rode different contracted beasts and followed Ji Xiao. Qing Fu leaned against the door frame, still frowning, and stared to the sky. A wisp of dark dot green smoke appeared between her eyebrows, for a fleeting moment. Jiang Yao, she whispered. Up in the air, the crow was flying towards the southwest. Ji Hao patted the crow on its head. The crow stopped flying forwards immediately, hovered in the air, turned its head around, looked at Jia Hao, and cawed at him. It looked quite puzzled. Mr. Crow, I know we have our ancestors' rules to obey, so I can't ask you to deal with Ji Shu and his people for me, but if I do it myself, no matter what you see, you won't tell anyone, am I right, smirked Ji Hao, and rubbed Mr. Crow's head. The crow blinked its eyes and cawed loudly, while it showed a sly look to Ji Hao. Good. Good. What are we? We're brothers. You have known me since I was a baby, now there are some people who want Abba, Ama, and me to die. You wouldn't let them, will you? Ji Hao stood up, looked back at the gold black mountain, and muttered. I am known for always seeking revenge for even the smallest grievances. An eye for an eye. I don't want to wait till tomorrow. Ji Hao pointed at a direction, the crow opened its wings and swerved in the air. It flew slowly, quietly and silently, to where Ji Hao had pointed. His fiery feathers turned back to normal. After a quarter of an hour, the crow quietly landed on a mountain, hundreds of miles away from the gold black mountain. Ji Hao leaped down from the crow's head, after which he dragged a pile of vines off. An entrance to a cave became visible, up in front of them. It was a cave hidden behind the pile of vines. The cave was nearly a hundred meters in radius. Dozen of big clay vats, one, were placed orderly in the cave. Every one of these vats was sealed with clay. Ji Hao checked them one by one, then chose one and carefully carried it on his shoulder. After Ji Hao had brought the vat out of the cave, he covered the entrance again with the vines. He held the vat in his arms and hopped on Mr. Crow's head. The crow flapped its wings, and rose silently to the sky. After a few minutes, the crow landed in a valley, which was a few miles away from the cave. The valley was quiet and clean, white cobblestones were everywhere. Ji Hao seemed very familiar with this place. He walked to a gigantic stone in the center of the valley and violently kicked it. The entire valley shook slightly. With a thundering noise, the gigantic stone moved and floated in the air. In the span of few breaths, the cobblestones nearby converged towards this gigantic stone and formed a pure dot white stone giant ultimately. The stone giant started to creak its body. Stones on his body began to move inward rapidly and his body was constantly being compressed. Soon, this stone giant was as short as Ji Hao, and its face and body became human dot like. How, you naughty kid. You dot looking for me. The stone dot man had a rough, yet clear face. He popped his eyes and looked at Ji Hao. Suddenly, its eyes moved and locked onto the clay vat, which Ji Hao held in his arm. Bo O's dot booze, go dot good. W H dot what you dot want me to dot do for dot you dot this time. 
Shield that you dot again, the stone dot man smacked its lips and tensely shook his head. Last dot time, I al almost got killed by the old dot old tree. I want two dot vats, or I'm dot out. Hey, stone. Where did you learn how to bargain? Who taught you this? Ji Hao looked surprised at the stone dot man, handed the vat over to him and continued, Okay. I'll get you another one tomorrow. Here, this is yours, and you only need to do me a small favor. The vat contained fruit wine, which had a bright dot orange color and smelled wonderfully, with a few fruits mixed in it. The stone dot man opened its mouth, and drank the wine up delightfully in only a single breath. He smashed the vat then to pieces, and yawned satisfied. All dot right dot to do dot what? The stone man beat his own chest and said, Are we going to dot to chop the old tree's branches? Or dot or steal the mean woman's eggs? Or dot or something else? J.I. Howe narrowed his eyes and smirked. No. We're not playing those childish games this time. Some people want Abba, Ama, and me dead. I'm going to kill them before that, and you will shield me. That's it. Ji Hao paused for a second, slapped the stone man's shoulder and said. Stone. We need two more helpers. Where's the evil girl? Is she at home at the moment? Call. The fire crow was quietly preening beside Ji Hao. When it heard Ji Hao speak about the evil girl, it shivered and cawed loudly. One, a vat. A large open vessel for holding or storing liquids. Chapter 9, Calculation You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 9. Calculation at a clearing in the dense jungle, a natural hot spring was bubbling. BVEC the spring water was so clear that one could see down to the bottom. There was a layer of white sand on the bottom of the pool. Near the mouth of the spring, one, a black flagstone had been set at the side of the pool. The spring water was constantly gushing out of the pool, flowing through few traces on the stone surface and seeping into the ground. Ji Wu was comfortably sitting in the warm water, eyes closed and with a smile on his face. His skin occasionally emitted a faint, fiery light. Jiang Yao held a three-dot-meter-dot-long red serpent and circled around the pool while whispering a strange, ancient spell. Her voice gradually grew louder. Suddenly, she sliced the serpent's neck with a black jade knife in her hand. Hot blood poured onto the stone and formed a dozen strange spell symbols, too, on the stone surface. Seven big and muscular women were standing around the pool, throwing medicinal packages made of all kinds of herbs into the water. In addition to the medicinal packages, they sometimes threw in odd things, such as arm.long beast fangs, poison sacks from unknown creatures, and a variety of insects' bodies or carapaces, three, into the pool. Following Jiang Yao's voice, the clear spring water gradually changed color, turning into a pool of blood.red thick liquid. Wisps of red smoke drilled into Ji Wu's skin. Ji Wu then began to twitch his body. His tranquil expression also became twisted. A few miles away, Ji Hao stood on a treetop, and smiled as he watched Jiang Yao and Ji Wu. The stoneman was sauntering under the tree. He felt annoyed that his body was too heavy for him to climb up trees. Yet he was very curious about what they were seeing from up there. The only thing he could do was frequently look up at Ji Hao and hope that he would speak a few words. Next to stone, there was an old tree. This tree had human.limb.like branches and a mouth.like, large tree hole, with which it sipped fruit wine from a vat that it had wrapped with its branches. Whenever stone walked near the old tree, the tree would lash his butt with branches. However, stone could not sense any pain with its body made up of stones. Sitting next to Ji Hao on the treetop was a breathtakingly beautiful girl. Leaves and vines decorated her body and made her look like a woodland fairy. She held a longbow with a charming smile on her delicate face. Her facial expression kept changing at every moment. Sometimes she frowned and pondered seriously, and in the next moment she would suddenly raise her eyebrows and giggle. 
The girl was riding a leopard, which had fire.red fur with silver spots on it. This 30.feet.long leopard was standing on a kid.fist.thick branch, but the branch didn't even sway a bit. The beast seemed as light as a phantom and as graceful as a prince. The stone man was a stonemlin. The stonemlin once was an ancient stone down in the valley. Somehow, the stone had learned to absorb the life force energy from nature. Year by year, it started to grow a human dot like spirit and eventually learned how to turn itself into a human shape. The old tree was a treeman. Slightly different from stone, this old tree was born from seeds and had grown into a mundane tree. However, this ordinary yet special tree was born with a strong spiritual power. One day it had unexpectedly awakened into sentience. Since then, it had always known how to enhance itself with the natural life force energy. After years of practicing, the old tree became a mobile treeman with human dot like limbs. The girl named Heng Luo at Ji Hao's side was a little girl and a deity from the nature. She was a nymph, which was a magical creature. Hong Luo was born by the gathering of natural life force energy and spiritual power, with the talent to control beasts, identify all kinds of plants, and communicate with all living creatures. She was the guard of the jungle, the vitality of the jungle and that of her were tightly connected to each other. Ji Hao had never liked to hang around with kids in the village. Ever since he had learned to walk, he had spent nearly all his time in this jungle. These years, Stone, the Treeman, Hang Luo, and few other special creatures were his true friends. Mr. Crow was also standing on the treetop beside Ji Hao and Hang Luo. It turned its head sideways and cawed to them. Hang Luo nodded, she touched a branch near her with her slim finger. Suddenly, a green sprout on that branch started to grow rapidly, quickly turning into a big flower. An intense fragrance came, along with the voices of Ji Wu and Jiang Yao, from the flower. In the jungle every plant could become the eyes and ears of Heng Luo. Ji Hao squatted down next to Heng Luo, quietly listening to what Jiang Yao was saying to her son. Jiang Yao walked rapidly around the hot spring pool and constantly threw things into the water. Meanwhile, she was harshly talking to Ji Wu. Wu, you're the son of mine. Your grandfather is the master magispriest and a powerful leader in the Bai Fong clan, for. You have the noble blood, which is far better than that of the people from this humble fire crow clan. How could you lose your fight against a kid, four years younger than you? Ama. Ji Wu grimaced in pain then said. He attacked me in the back. That little bastard that I won't let him have another chance at the ceremony. I will split him. While speaking, Ji Wu waved his arms in the air excitedly. That's right. My son, you belong to our Bai Fong clan, you should be way better than those crows people. You should kill the little bastard at the ceremony that you're my son, you can never lose to a boy of that lowly Qing Yi clan woman. Jiang Yao said in a cold voice. Qing Yi clan woman. Heng Luo curiously looked at Ji Hao and asked, Is that your ama? How, I like your ama, I like her smell. Ji Hao listened to the sounds coming from the flower, and slowly answered. I like ama too, but it seems some people don't. But Wu. No, do not kill him. You will make the blood oath, five, with Ji Hao at the worship ceremony. If one of you loses the fight, he will become the slave of the other one. You will enslave that little bastard. You understand. Jiang Yao paused then continued. I have enough slaves. Abba eliminated dozens of small clans these years, I have hundreds of slaves. I don't want him to be my slave. I want to kill him, Ama. Ji Wu yelled when he heard what Jiang Yao said. You silly boy, you will enslave him. Jiang Yao narrowed her eyes and her voice turned vicious. Enslave him. If I can't kill Qing Fu at the ceremony, we will trade two of her treasures with Ji Hao's life. Ji Hao heard what she said through the flower, raised his eyebrows and applauded to this perfect plan. Wonderful, her husband wants to replace Abba and be the leader, 
she wants Amma's treasures, her son wants to kill me. What a nice family. While laughing, Ji Hao pointed towards the spring pool. The treeman opened his tree. Whole mouth wide, swallowed the vat, moved his gigantic body, and slowly walked towards the pool. 1. The mouth of the spring. A hole where the spring water comes out from underground. 2. The spell symbols. Symbols appeared when a certain magic dot force been triggered. Usually, the magic dot force will be triggered when a magus read a certain magic spell. 3. Carapaces. Hard outer covering or case of certain organisms such as arthropods and turtles. 4. Bifong clan. Another thriving and historical clan. 5. Blood Oath A blood oath is when one would shed their own blood and offer it onto an altar or whatever they believed right and swore to uphold a certain task, no matter what. Also it was when a person would shed blood, usually, they'd cut their hand and then shake hands in agreement with a task they swear to uphold. 